Now we are going to read another poem called The Solitary Reaper by a very famous poet called William Wordsworth. Listen to the poem now. Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain, and sings a melancholy strain. Oh, listen, for the wail profound is overflowing with, her, with the sound. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands, or travellers in some shady haunt amongst Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the furthest Hebrides. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old unhappy far-off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today? Some of the natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been and may be again. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending, I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore long after it was no more. Let's look at some of the words that we have come across. Here is a picture of a lass with a sickle. A lass is a girl and it's a Scottish origin word. The Scottish Highlands is the land of the bagpipers. Have you heard about the bagpipe? It's a wind instrument and the bagpipers produce beautiful soulful haunting music. A veil profound means a huge valley. Arabian sands, the deserts of Arabia. Hebrides, the remotest group of islands lying off the northwest coast of Scotland. As I told you, a lass, and do you know the masculine form of that? It's a lad. And a lass means a girl or a young woman. Here is a typical highland lass, the solitary reaper. What is reaping? Do you know this word? Reaping is cutting and gathering a crop of corn or rice. Plainful, plaintive numbers, they are sad music. Humble lay means an ordinary song. Do you know what's a sickle, right? Now what do you know of this instrument that you see in the picture? This is a farm implement called a scythe and this is used when it is when you're standing without having to bend down to cut the harvest. A sickle on the other hand requires one to bend down or squat on the field as one cuts the harvest. A melancholy strain means a sad song. Some thoughts to ponder. Sometimes we experience something beautiful and lovely like a haunting song or a tune played on the bagpipes and we remember it for a long time afterwards. Have you experienced it? Have you heard the insistent cuckoo, cuckoo of this bird? Have you seen a musical cuckoo clock by the way? Or the melodious chant of a nightingale which in India we call as the coil. William Wordsworth describes a memorable experience he had while out on a walk in the Scottish Highlands. The music was so enchanting that he could feel it in his heart for a long time, even after he had moved on and trudged up the hill. This poem, The Solitary Reaper, was written on November 5th, 1805 and published in 1807. The poem is broken into four eight-line stanzas, making a total of 32 lines each. Most of the poem is in iambic tetrameter. The rhyme scheme for the stanzas is either A, B, C, B, D, D, E, E or A, B, A, B, C, C, D, D. In the first and last stanzas, the first and third lines don't rhyme, while in the other two stanzas they do. This poem is unique in Wordsworth's oeuvre because while most of his work 
is based closely on his own experiences. The solitary reaper is based on the experience of someone else, a person called Thomas Wilkinson, as described in his tours to the British mountains. The passage that inspired Wordsworth is the following. Past a female who was reaping alone, she sung in Erse, the Gaelic language of Scotland, as she bended over her sickle, the sweetest human voice I ever heard. Her strains were tenderly melancholy and felt delicious long after they were heard no more. Part of what makes this poem so intriguing is the fact that the speaker does not understand the words being sung by the beautiful young lady. In the third stanza, he is forced to imagine what she might be singing about. He supposes that she may be singing about history and things that happened long ago or some sadness that has happened in her own time and probably will happen again. As the speaker moves on, he carries the music of the young lady with him in his heart. This is a prevalent theme in much of Wordsworth's poetry. For example, the same idea is used in I wandered lonely as a cloud when the speaker takes the memory of the fields of daffodils with him to cheer him up on bad days in the poem Daffodils. A voice so thrilling was never heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the furthest Hebrides. Will no one ever tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old, unhappy, far-off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today, some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been and may be again? Whatever the theme, the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still and as I mounted up the hill the music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas amongst the furthest Hebrides. In the third stanza you learn that the speaker cannot understand the words being sung. He can only guess at what she might be singing about. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today? Some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been and perhaps may be again. In the fourth and final stanza, the speaker tells you that, there may, that even though he did not know what she was singing about, the music stayed in his heart as he continued up the hill. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending. Make a note, part of what makes this song, makes this poem so enchanting is the fact that the speaker does not understand the words being sung by the beautiful young lady. In the third stanza, he, ex he exerts himself to imagine what she might be singing about. Perhaps she's singing about history, things that happened long ago, or about some sad event that happened earlier and might happen again. The Scottish clans, those are the families, have had fierce battles among themselves. When one chieftain tries to achieve supremacy over another by sad killings. As the speaker moves on, he carries the music of the young lady with him in his heart. Based on this poem, let us consider answering some of the questions. We are going to jump straight to question number six. A. The central idea of the poem, The Solitary Reaper is 1. Well sung songs give us happiness. 2. Melodious songs appeal to all. 3. Beautiful experiences give us lifelong pleasure. 4. Reapers can sing songs like birds. The answer is, beautiful experiences give us lifelong pleasure. Question B. <clears throat> In the
in the poem the solitary reaper to whom does the poet say stop here or gently pass one to the people cutting corn two to himself three to the people who make noise four to all the passers by the answer is four to all the passers by question c the solitary reaper is a narrative poem set to music this form of verse is called a one ballad two soliloquy three monologue four sonnet the answer is a ballad question d the poet's lament in the poem the solitary reaper is that one he cannot understand the song two he did not know the lass three she stopped singing at once four he had to move away and the answer is one he cannot understand the song question e the setting of the poem is one arabia two hebrides three scotland four england and of course the answer is scotland wordsworth has chosen the nightingale to compare the solitary reaper because he finds the song sung by both to be extremely pleasant and welcome to tired and weary travelers similarly the lovely voice of the highland lass has been compared with the lilting notes of the cuckoo a bird which keeps cuckooing incessantly whose meaning need not be known question 8 in the sixth line of the first stanza we read and sings a melancholy strain this s sound has been repeated do you know why do you know what this poetic repetition is called it's called alliteration poets employ this device for emphasis See you soon with a new lesson the Lord Allen's daughter